So let's talk about DevSecOps and compare it with the generic DevOps process. DevOps has made it possible to develop applications in a far quicker time by aligning development, testing, and operations team. However, in most cases, security is not integrated into the development process and thus becoming vulnerable to the risk of threats and bugs. Here is where DevSecOps comes in picture. The DevSecOps approach includes incorporating security as a significant component of DevOps practices. While DevOps refers to the collaborative environment between the development, testing, and operation teams to achieve continuous delivery, DevSecOps involves the integration of the security components within the same DevOps process. DevOps includes several, several areas of focus, which includes automated provisioning, continuous integration, continuous monitoring, and test-driven development. As an extension of the DevOps mindset, DevSecOps is the methodology of integrating security tools within the DevOps process in an automated fashion. A typical DevOps process flows through the following stages. So it has a developer writing code and pushing it to a central code repository. The CICD server then pulls the code from the code repository and packages the build artifacts and does a round of testing. These artifacts are then deployed back into staging, do another round of testing, and deployed to production servers using Docker or Kubernetes. And finally, you may also have a monitoring service to monitor the service uptime regularly. But what about security? Do you see any security here? No. In a typical DevOps cycle, security is often added towards the end through a manual or automated process. Once the application is running in production or staging environment, we get a test scheduled. So let's imagine a scenario where a production application is tested and a high risk vulnerability like a SQL injection is discovered. In such a case, the team will fix the issue and are required to run the entire DevOps pipeline in order to fix a single SQL injection vulnerability. This is clearly not a good option as there is a high risk factor because the bug or the issue is found in production and could have been exploited. At the same time, deployments have been made in staging and the production environment, which consumes resources like CPU, memory, storage, and networking. And because of this, the costs are also high to fix it. At the same time, speed of delivery may also be impacted because it has to go through the entire pipeline again. So in order to avoid this, what if we bring security a little closer to the development lifecycle by embedding security within the same DevOps pipeline? So for example, the same SQL injection in this case could have been easily discovered at an early stage with the help of a source code scanner and fixed even before packaging the application, so maybe even before the build stage. So by doing this, we have some benefits, like the costs are reduced by uncovering and fixing the security issues further left in the development lifecycle versus in the production environment. The speed of the product delivery is increased by incorporating automated security tests versus adding the same testing at the end of the lifecycle. And at the same time, there is a uh, you know, decrease in the risk factor as well, because the number of vulnerabilities are found pretty early in the stage and can also be reduced. And we also see that there are no new deployments because even before you build the application, we are catching the bugs and hence, you know, you don't consume any resources by deploying the application. We'll see what are the security options we have and how we can integrate them within the DevOps practice. So first, let's talk about integrating security into every step of the software development lifecycle. So it's all about shifting left the security and incorporating it into every step of the software development lifecycle. So what it actually means is, you know, all these things should work together to build and deploy a trusted applications. So some of the major things to look out for is you need to have a configuration governance so that you don't expose sensitive data to source code management systems. 
At the same time, you need to also have static code analysis before you build it or after you build it so that you can know the code quality, what you're pushing to the source code management, and you can know what is the code coverage and the code smells. You need to also do the dependency scanning in order to find out any outdated uh, dependencies and in order to see you know, what type of vulnerabilities your dependencies have. And you also need to do a round of dynamic application security testing to secure the API interfaces. So when we talk about microservices, so most of the microservices interact through APIs. And you also need to scan for image, images which are downloading from Docker because you don't know who built the images or what are the vulnerabilities. So we can make use of container scanning tools to scan the images to check if the containers are running as root or if you're using latest images. And you also need to have a runtime security to monitor your applications and your cluster for any abnormalities. So new exploits and CVs come out every day. So we need to continuously run our applications through these steps to find out new issues and ways to mitigate them. So what type of security can be integrated at different stages of your pipeline? So we could add you know, pre-commit or pre-publish hooks on the developer workstation so that when the developer tries to push or commit the code to a source code management system, it runs tests to check any sensitive data or you know, is being pushed and it will deny the commit or push. On the source code management side, if we want to store any secrets or any sensitive configurations, maybe we can encrypt them or make use of some secret vaults like HashiCorp. On the testing side, we could run the regular unit tests followed by some mutation tests to test if the unit tests are correct or not. And also we can also do some static code analysis to see the code coverage, code smells, code duplications, and the code quality. Before we build or during the build phase, we can test the dependencies which are being used in the application for the vulnerabilities. If you are building a Docker image or a Docker container, we could scan for images, add image signatures, scan for Docker files to weed out any bad configurations. During the deploy or the staging step, we could validate the image signature which were added in the previous step to make sure that you're running the correct image and also run some integration tests. Before we run or promote the application to a production stage, we should run dynamic application security testing for interface security testing. And we could also do an infrastructure compliance scan, validating both the runtime configs and the cluster configurations before we run or deploy the application. We also need to monitor both the application logs as well as the security logs to analyze and mitigate any real-time issues. And as far as security is concerned with respect to Kubernetes, there are many things to take into consideration like airbag rules, SE Linux, app armor, network policies, mutual authentication, auditing, and many more. So we will be using you know, some of this uh, security concepts within our pipeline to secure our you know, DevOps uh, pipeline.